Ah. G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a bloody Deathclaw Gauntlet with 40% faster swing speed and plus one strength major and minor legendary effects, respectively. So I've talked about using this for a while, particularly in my Unstoppable Monster video, but is a bloodied swing speed Deathclaw Gauntlet better than a bloodied power attack damage gauntlet? Well, we'll see, we'll make that decision throughout this video. So, yep, 151 damage, that is without this thing equipped, because when you do equip it, it gives you an extra bit of strength, which gives us a total of, um... 7 damage. Interestingly, this isn't saying the same thing. So, let's see. So, 19 damage. That goes up to 20 when I unequip that. So, we get one more point of punching damage and also 7 or 6. I don't really know what's going on there of uh, Deathclaw Gauntlet damage, which will be obviously uh, very useful once we get ourselves into uh, Nerd Rage Threshold, which we'll do in a second. But first, we can boost this thing with perks a little bit. Obviously, having the strength at 15 is going to give us a lot of base damage, you know, regardless of what we have on it now. But let's just find Iron Fist. There it is. And of course, Serendipity in um, Luck, as well as Bloody Mess, wherever that is. Yep, starts with B, obviously, at the start of the list. Ninja, Evasive and Sneak. Escape Artist, Adrenaline. Obviously, it's a very stealth-oriented build we've got going here. Makeshift Warrior to keep those blades sharp. And we've also got Radical. Usually, I don't bother the using this. I get some complaints when I don't, so fuck it, I'll just chuck it on because we, we definitely don't need any more damage. So, 217 damage. And as you can tell, when the damage goes up, um, we get more with our strength bonus anyway. So, yeah, let's go and boost that even further. Alrighty, so note the health bar just sitting under Nerd Rage Threshold there, and 12 12 damage. So, we're already hitting for over 1k. And just to give you an idea of how much. Um, Radical gives you damage, would be hitting for slightly less. It's not a whole lot, but it's a nice boost to have, I guess, if you're really looking to push the damage for this thing. So that is why I don't usually use I mean, I'm only missing out on a couple of hundred here and there. And if your weapon's already hitting over, you know, a thousand, I don't think you have to use it. Maybe if you're in a fight with a Scorch Beast Queen, go right ahead. But, you know, there's a problem with that. I'm in combat for some reason. Oh, the gulpers. Yeah, whatever. Um, yes, but the, the Scorch Beast Queen has like a 70 damage resistance factor, so whatever you do, it's, you're going to be doing about 30% of the damage promised to you, which is why I hate that fight. Like, you could shoot it all day with a bloodied handmaid, you know, at full Nerd Rage Dash and you'd be doing nothing to it. Alrighty, so here we are outside of West Hack as usual, and again, we'll have a look at our buffs in a second. So, yep, there's all of our unyielding armor ready to go. 35 strength out of all that, which is good for the old carry weight, isn't it? Yes, if you need to hold a bunch of goods anywhere, basically uh, get yourself with unyielding and all that, and you'll be right. So we'll, we'll pay attention to how much damage we're actually doing against these super mutants. 3820. We'll see if we can't whack him in the face for even more damage. Well, we took that bloke's head off, so I'm, uh, I should have got a nice headshot bonus out of that, but whatever. There we go. So, basically, it's going to be a game of one-shotting everyone, and as long as we can quickly take out all of these super mutants, and that guy resisted all of my damage, so that's annoying. Ironically, I did get a headshot on him, he just decided not to take any damage from that particular attack. Also, where is this last guy? I'm missing out on a few spawns here, it would seem. Oh, it's just a doggo, it's stuck inside a wall. Okay, I'll let you off, you... You probably couldn't see me. All right, so with damage at 60% from Adrenaline, 1699. Yep, that's pretty solid. Now, I know you might all be thinking, why is it called a bloody Deathclaw Gauntlet when there's no blood on it? Well, there it is, right there, yeah. Although the bloodied thing implies that it's covered in your blood and not the blood with others. Perhaps if it was like a blood feeding thing, like, I don't know, ooh, dodged you there, mate. Yeah, but... Yes, perhaps if it was enemy's blood which got this thing going, then it'd be super overpowered because you'd get the thing covered in blood and you'd do even more damage. That'd be fun. Oh, I really don't like when they <laughs> use lag to their advantage, but we're through with this lot. Let's go inside. You know, I was really surprised with how many people were lining up to tell me how horrible my build is when I posted my strength build video. Like, how how is it bad? Am I struggling here? Do I usually struggle using proper weapons all the time? Like, are they saying that I have to use god weapons to make my build work? Well, I don't use explosive shotguns all the time and I seem to go pretty well. And these super mutants sort of forgot where I was here. Alright. 
So it, they're, very, they're around. Um, we'll just slip back into caution thanks to Escape Artist and not get killed, hopefully. Okay, I think I'm in a dodgy server because these guys are taking hits where they shouldn't be and, and surviving them. And they're not blocking or anything. Some of them have rifles and stuff, and I'm sneaking half of the time. So, yeah, there's no excuse for this nonsense, Bethesda. I swung at a phantom. Alright, just going to use vats to teleport around, make sure I don't get hit. And, yes, as you can tell, I think Rejuvenated is a little bit bugged, because I've noted in some of my videos where I'm at Nerd Rage Threshold or something, and I get shot a little bit, and then my health jumps back up randomly. I think that might be because of Rejuvenated. Bethesda, please don't fix this. It's actually kind of useful, but, uh, yeah. I'm not actually sure how many people decide to... To actually use that perk because I don't think like everyone going for a melee build will probably chuck points in something like um, adamantium skeleton hey that was a headshot there for 3600 damage and all these spawns are a little bit staggered so someone in here might have cleared them all out with some sort of energy weapon before because I've noticed a few ash piles around so this this particular section this wing is you know completely cleared off when usually there would be but you know, we'd be one-shotting them anyway, so I'm going to let this slide now because I don't want to jump out now and struggle to find a server full of things. So, um, looks like we've got a spawn tier below what we usually have, so I don't think these are even our spawns. And there's another instance right there of us not doing damage when we really ought to, which could be really, really problematic. And not problematic in the white girl sense that it might be offensive to someone. Problematic is it might get us fucking killed. Ah, health jumped up there. Obviously, it's not as noticeable with only one rank in, um, in thing. And I'm just waiting for these super mutants to roll around the corner. Maybe I shouldn't, I should just use this opportunity to get over here. See, movement is what you really want to get. Um, ooh, it's a Gatling Plasma. There you go. That's not what I got, game. Come on. Um, yes, but movement is kind of your friend here because if you've got dead man sprinting, you know, you can move super fast, and I can't see a fucking thing. Go away, Gatling Plasma, thank you. I really wish they'd shift that to somewhere else, or just made it make it a little bit smaller. And we actually were able to swing fast enough there to uh, evade his attacks, or just kill him before he could make that strike. So yeah, definitely merits using this thing with swing speed. And I'm not power attacking all the time, but I don't think I'm, I'm too, you know, I'm not struggling on damage at all to warrant me, you know, using that extra... Uh, damage from those power attacks as a means to kill these guys as a regular attack will do just fine And I can just attack 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 constantly the rate of swinging with this is immense And I think I think this is why bloodied swing speed death claw gauntlets are a little bit better Surely if you're you know taking on a mile or a, a, a scorch beast queen You'd prefer to attack a little bit faster than just do an odd power attack Which will cut down on your AP anyway, maybe you need your AP for a quick getaway who knows um, there's nothing stopping you from using both hands and wielding both at the same time, you know, in real life, but Fallout's like, nah, you can't have that, but that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Alright, let's see if we can't one-shot Swan here. Whack him in the noggin. Yep, that'll do him in. And let me tell you something, it's a rough start to the train yard smash because the super mutants are already looking for revenge and I just picked up a minigun. Oh god, are they looking for revenge or a place to do what adults do inside there? Alright, one of these hits is going to get him. Or I could just open the door. Alright. <laughs> Alright, so onto the train yard smash and... Let's see what we've drawn. I'm hoping it's something strong, like, I don't know, gulpers or something. Something to show off the strength of this thing. It is. Okay, it's an angler, which means it could be anglers and gulpers. Always, always, always. Never forget your red X's and all that. Yep, I see a gulper over there. Looks like we've drawn some pretty tough enemies. The anglers look the part. I reckon they look all right. They look pretty cool. They've got this light on the front, and you got to figure out how to kill them. All right, so no sneak attack critting, and uh, we're basically one swinging anything. So we've got the damage, and it's got the rate of swinging to deal with basically anything. So compared to its um, swing speed damage counterpart, it's a lot. It's a lot better in these crowd control situations, and it's it's so good in the crowd control situations that it can turn fucking gulpers, gucking fulpers into crowd control enemies, and that 
in itself is impressive. Oh my god. Look at this fucking little level 40 rad toad cowering in here. Yeah, you better run, you little bastard. Alright. Old mate sitting on a pile of spikes and done a ton of damage to himself. Oh my god, he's just... Bloody hell. They'll do anything not to kill me. Hey, there's a Scorch Beast over there. I wonder if he's fighting a player. Yep. Best of luck to you, level 41 guy. Hope he's running a Stealth Commando build. Alrighty, let's see what the crabs have for us today. Glowing Mylurk King. Yep, the Yuge. And hopefully we don't run into any problems with these guys. Because uh, they can potentially give you strength reducing diseases, which honestly, you don't want. They're not good. And alright, we can probably pick up the pace a little bit here. Oh my god, it's a fucking lobster. Okay, these aren't my spawns. I'd be one-shotting him regardless of this fucking lag. There we go, he's dead. And then a big old sting happens, which means the queen is out. Let's just regain our stealth. Knock you out of the park. Alright, so damage before we take out the queen in one shot. 16.99 once more. Whack her in the leg. And she is dead. And she's giving she's given us a cannonball, which means broadsider. Fuck you too, game. Rightio, time for a bit of Scorch Beast hunting, I reckon. One's already dead. That's going to set the tone for this little section here now, isn't it? So we'll just go up and uh, hit him with a shotgun and break his wings, and then he'll be forced to land. Now our task now is to just to whack him in the head. I don't think we're in Nerd Rage um, threshold now. I uh, must have... No, I'm not. Okay, well, we miss out a cut on a little bit of damage there, so... We'll keep on going. We'll see if we can't draw one out of here. There's another one. Alrighty, time for a spot of Scorch Beast hunting, I reckon. I have with me a shotgun, suppressed, that's all you need to know about it. And it has got the Enforcer Let perk onto that, because uh, what we're going to do here is, and this is basic fucking strategy here, is knock the bloody thing's wings down, and then it'll cause it to drop. Hopefully we don't get the blight after getting hit up by that. And then when it's on the ground, we can proceed to beating the shit out of it with a Deathclaw Fist. So uh, we'll do that. Now, making sure we aren't sneaking, or we're sneaking close enough to it so we do get this. And we've got the Blight. Well, that's not very good. And with 57, 58 damage, we've just one-shotted it. So again, um, we can one-shot these things with sneaking without the ninja all the way up to, uh, you know give you a bit of an idea of how powerful this thing is. Now, if I'm lucky, I'll draw one right out of that little section there. But for now, we'll just take on this secondary one. Again, a shotgun is very, very um, useful, especially a suppressed shotgun. The suppressor on this is going to help me keep nice and hidden. And if I'm nice and hidden, like I am totally not now. <laughs> All right. So he's decided not to land because he's a cheap bastard. But we, what we can do instead is gather adrenaline by hopefully killing... Oh, there's a cave cricket. Yeah, that'll aggro things, won't it? And he is also immune to being hit with this thing. Something's weird. Something weird is going on tonight. I've jumped a couple of servers here and there to make sure I actually can hit these guys. And unfortunately for me, the Scorch Beast is in a position where I can't actually attack him. Which is... Odd. It's a little bit rare, but now he is in a position where he's flying around again. We'll just whack him in the wings once more. See if we can't make him land. Alright, he's coming in for that cheap-ass crop duster attack. Got a couple of good hits on him. See, it's not, um, it's not a matter of how hard you hit him, it's just whether you hit him at all, you see. Because that gives you that cripple chance. He's going to drop down now, isn't he? Excellent. So if we can swing around to his face, we'll see what we can do. Alright. Not even a headshot is required to kill these guys with one shot, which is most excellent, yes. So, again, um, making the... Uh, hang on, I'm just going to take a right away here before I fucking die. But, yes, making the, um, the power attack damage with an unstoppable monster, you know, at least for a mobbing, like endgame mobbing, 
purposes very, very useless in comparison. So, you know, I'm liking the swing speed. I think I might like this better than an unstoppable monster, especially that extra strength. You get a little bit more damage out of it, which is very nice. Alrighty, time to take on a few ghouls, I guess, and just gonna pop that red X because I'm going to get hit, and I don't want to get killed from all the rads. So, I'm not going to be using too much stealth here. In fact, I'm gonna see if I can rely on the swing speed of this particular weapon to actually get me through with this combat, as that ghoul just totally runs into the door there, or onto the wall. So there we go, we've got rad worms, which is a shame, but uh, we've still got that rad X, and I did see a... a a um, plasma goo pile outside, so at least there's one goo we don't have to deal with here. So here we go, here's where it's going to come into its own there. So as you can tell there, very quick time to kill on these ghouls, and very quick time to kill a lot of these ghouls. This is bad terminology. Basically, you can swing fast with this thing and do a whole lot of damage when you're doing it, so it's infinitely better, okay, not infinitely better, but significantly better, that's a nice Gatling Plasma, in better in crowd control situations than the unstoppable monster non-swing speed counterpart, and I don't have to worry about, you know, lack of damage output, as you've seen in this video, that there's actually, um, moments where I can easily one-shot a, uh, Scorch Beast, and nice, and he was already dead before I even found him, so, honestly, I'm not struggling for damage in any sense of the, uh, term there, so I don't think having that power attack damage is totally necessary. It's great if you want to do a ton more damage with power attacks, but honestly, you could probably go well without, and having that extra um, swing speed makes it so much better in mobbing that it's hard to turn down or turn down that extra if you're offered. So yeah, there's my thoughts on the whole swing speed versus um, power attacking uh, Gatling Plasma, no, not Gatling Plasma, Deathcore Gauntlet there. Let me know your thoughts in the section below, and also, be sure to kill my build shit, because as you as you saw in this video, we've just had a horrible, horrible time taking out our enemies, because our, our build is terrible, and we can't do anything, and also, it's another legendary drop of a guy who wasn't even legendary. Thanks, Todd, for free legendaries. Hey, it's a swimsuit and a red dress. What a drop. I'm going to pinch these as well. Oh, I can't. So, yeah, that's about enough for me. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Meanwhile, trying to take a goddamn thumbnail shot is a bit difficult when the Scorch Beasts are after me. Alright, here we go. Level 80 Scorch Beast all or nothing. Punch in the face. Got him. Thank you.